guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I'm back with another top 10 tips and tricks, but wait for it. This video is designed for people who are going to Disney for the first time. Maybe more specifically for those young families. This is my top 10 tips and tricks on how to prepare your family for Disney. Now this is beyond necessarily items to purchase or items to pack. You've already booked your trip, you've watched the packing videos, you've done the things, right? How do you physically or even mentally prepare your family for what a Disney vacation is? Does this kind of make sense? Especially, like I said, for those of you with younger kiddos. So I've been a travel agent for many, many years specializing in Disney. And this is a question my clients would ask me all the time. Like, Nina, how do, how do I prep my five-year-old for being ready for Disney? How do I prep my three-year-old? Like, what are some tips and tricks to kind of get your little kiddos ready for Disney? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And maybe not all 10 are perfect for you, but I'm hoping at least one or two of them might set off a little light bulb for you so that you can just best prepare your little kiddos for, you know, flying, traveling, staying in a hotel, walking, eating different food, all those great things. We're gonna talk about it tonight. Are you guys ready? So in no particular order, right? Number one is walking. Disney equals lots of walking miles and miles of walking day after day after day. I'm trying not to be dramatic, but yes, I am because it is literally that much walking. And if you have a kiddo who is walking age, even if you wanna stroller them a little bit, if they are walking age, you 100% want to practice, practice, practice walking as much as you can. And I'm not talking just walking around the house, right? I'm talking long distance walking, all day long walking, walking in the sun. You wanna get that practice in. Even if your kiddo is part-time stroller, part-time walking, any sense of walking, you wanna get that practice in. You wanna walk around your neighborhood. We used to just walk around our neighborhood several times a week to prep not only our legs, but our kiddos for that type of walking, right? We would walk the mall. We would go to the places like the zoo, right? When you go to your local zoo, you're outside. Usually it's kind of like an all day long family activity. These are good ways to prep those little legs for lots of walking. And frankly, to be honest, like some adults need some practicing too. I noticed a lot of people will go to Disney and they don't realize how much walking it is. And after the first day, their feet are sore, their legs are sore, sore. They can't imagine doing it for another day. You definitely want to practice so you can get those legs kind of used to an all day long walking situation. Next one up, which kind of contradicts the walking a little bit, but hopefully it makes sense, is kids in a stroller or kids that you are going to baby wear. Now, Let's talk about that for a second. Obviously kids who are stroller age, and again, there is no age for when you need to get out of the stroller. It is per child. Perhaps you have a whiny kid, perhaps you have a young kid, perhaps you have a kid who's a so-called runaway. Yeah, it may be safer for you to uh, stroller that kiddo. And for the people who baby wear, so when you have a younger kiddo, and I would baby wear mine when they were three and under at Disney. So I would wear what was called a Mai Tai baby carrier. They make different kinds nowadays. Um, and so you can baby wear your child while at Disney. In fact, you can even go on some of the rides while they're, you know, being carried by you. Perhaps they're napping and you can still ride those rides. Obviously, they're rides that don't have height requirement. They're not coasters. But any of your kind of like little rides, you know, it's a small world. Uh, you can go ahead and baby wear your kiddo while they're sleeping, right? This is what you want to practice. If you're going to baby wear, you yourself, the adult who's going to baby wear, you want to practice because not everyone baby wears all day long. You want to practice to get that back support and walking all day long with that baby as you baby wear them, right? You want to practice walking and sitting and getting up from sitting because that's what you'll be doing 
when getting in and out of a ride. Hopefully this makes sense. You also wanna train that kiddo who maybe is only used to being baby worn for about 30 minutes or so. You wanna get them used to doing that for a good chunk of the day. Mine would absolutely kind of pull on my shirt, ask to go nap. I would then put him in uh, the carrier and he would then fall asleep for about three to four hours while we were at Disney. And the rest of us would just walk around Epcot, snacking, going on rides, and he was just out like a log for three to four hours. But that was something we had practiced, right? So he knew to just kind of yank on my shirt, I would get out the carrier, and, and obviously younger kiddos aren't gonna do that. But you wanna practice. The, the kiddo needs to practice, and the adult who's gonna baby wear needs to practice. Now this is the same thing with the stroller. A lot of kids go in the stroller and they're fine. But let me ask you this, is your kiddo used to going in the stroller um, all day long? How well behaved is your kiddo in that stroller? After 10 minutes of being in the stroller, are they asking to come out? Are they trying to roll around and unclip their seatbelt? Are they dragging their hands on the floor? These are the things you wanna practice. You wanna practice proper stroller safety. I can't tell you how many times I have seen parents practically dragging their kids throughout Disney even though they're in the stroller, the kid's hanging out of the stroller, kid doesn't wanna be in the stroller, and the parent's thinking, can you just get it together? We're just trying to get to the next ride. We're just trying to get to the next point. Can you just keep it together and stay in the stroller until we get to the next stroller parking? So these are the things you wanna practice. You wanna practice that kiddo in that stroller for longer periods of time, and you wanna practice having them behave, You know, keep their hands <laughs> not on the gross concrete and all those things. You just you just, you wanna practice those types of things because not kiddos are not used to being baby worn all day perhaps, and they're not used to being in a stroller. Some kids, you know, like 30 minutes in a stroller, they're done, don't get me near that stroller. Hopefully this kind of makes sense. So again, it's all about that practice, practice, practice. Next thing up is music. Now, a lot of you families might be doing this already, uh, you know, with like Sirius Radio and those kind of satellite radio stations. When my kiddos were young, we didn't have that option. We had CDs, <laughs> but I 100% prepared my kiddos for Disney by playing Disney themed music. And I'm not talking about, you know, Akuna Matata from The Lion King. I'm talking about music from the parks, actual ride music. While we were riding in the car, I would just play the soundtrack to all the rides. The kids got so used to those sounds that when we were on the ride, it was like second nature to them. This was especially helpful on the Haunted Mansion. Grim Grinning Ghosts, yeah, my daughter, by the time she'd gone to Haunted Mansion for the first time of being, you know, of older age, right? Obviously when she was a baby baby, it didn't matter. But when she got to the age of really kind of recognizing what's going on between the two and three zone, it was so helpful for us that she not only could sing Grim Grinning Ghosts, she had heard it before and she had even heard the elevator story that happens when you go into Haunted Mansion. It is on my videos if you don't know what I'm talking about. The stretching room, there is kind of some eerie voices that come out. Uh, she was all prepared for that because we listened to the soundtrack in the car. So you can 100% buy this on Amazon, Music from the Park, right? You can go to your local library, check out various Disney CDs and kind of pull select songs from that and get yourself a playlist. But this is what I 100% suggest. You want to get that music that is played all throughout the parks so that you get your child familiar with what they're going to hear. The interesting thing is if you can get your hand on this CD, guess what song number one is? Zippity Doodah, that's right. Is this gonna be a collector's item soon? Just curious. Then we've got Yoho Yoho, that's from the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a small world, yep. Uh, Davy Crockett, where do we hear Davy Crockett? This again, this might be from, this is from Mix from the Parks. Uh, but I, I know that Davy Crockett song really, really well. I don't know if it's on the train or Mark Twain, but they do play it somewhere. Grim Gritting Ghost is on here. But you guys kind of get where I'm going with. If you, This might not be the one and only CD to get. There's various other Music in the Park CDs. Like I said, go to your local library, pull the different songs out, buy them from however you buy music. But I found this extremely helpful for my kids because imagine, you know, is this their first time on a plane in a hotel room in a theme park with all of these people, right? And all these colors and things to look at and noises. Having some familiarity is 
helpful, even if it's just the music. Even if they're just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? My mom just put me on a boat, what's happening? But then they hear a song that they're used to. It'll put them in a place of calm and ease. At least that's how I think about it. So yeah, 100% prep them with music. Now, that goes the same with visual, right? Actual footage of the park. Having your kiddo actually watch a ride or what it's like to go on a ride or what it's like to meet Mickey Mouse can absolutely be beneficial for not only you, but them. Now, take a minute here. When your child watches Mickey on TV, and again, this might've been a bigger issue years ago with my kids. When your child watches Mickey on TV, Mickey is a cartoon character, right? He's little, he's a mouse. When your child meets Mickey at the theme park, Mickey's a little bigger. So if you have a child who's sensitive to say Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, you can imagine how your child may be sensitive to someone like Mickey or Stitch or Buzz Lightyear or pick a character. So being able to watch actual footage of the theme park, whether it's through one of these silly sing-along videos, which uh, I bought them all. I have them all on DVD. This is how well I prepped my kids for Disney. Um, Having them watch something like this, which is a video of kids meeting characters, dancing with characters, singing those familiar songs, right? Absolutely helped my kids. But if you don't wanna get your hands on some of these really, really old, uh, silly sing-along songs, you can actually watch you know, YouTube videos. And you just wanna get give them a sense of what the parks are really like, right? Actual current footage, so that when they get there, again, they feel kind of at ease. They know where they are. It's sort of familiar to them. Heads up, I went to go look on Amazon to, uh, I did add it to my link. Uh, same with the CD, it's added to my link. Uh, they're trying to sell this for $60 right now. And I think the reason is, is yeah, zippity doo -dah might be on this one as well. But like I said, the point of it is to see uh, the relation between the size of a child and a si the size of Mickey. You know, what these characters look like. You wanna um, have them watch something that's all in good fun. So they get excited, but they also kind of know what to look forward to, if that kind of makes sense. Next thing up, waiting in line, <laughs> yeah. Waiting in line is huge at Disney. In fact, Disney is a lot of walking, waiting, and standing. That's right. If you can't walk or wait or stand, I don't know if Disney is right for you at this point. But you know, you do have to kind of practice that with the little kiddos. Not a lot of kiddos are used to waiting in line, especially in today's world where we just hand them a cell phone or a tablet or stick them in a stroller. How often has your child actually just waited in a long line with no stroller and no devices. Practice that, practice it at the grocery store, practice at the mall, practice in other areas where there's a long line. Take your kid out of the stroller and purposely have them practice standing in line with you. I know it seems dumb, but it might be helpful once you get to the theme park. You know, kind of standing still, standing quiet, behaving, or understanding what they need so that they could behave in line because like I said, walking, waiting, and standing, a lot of waiting in line is definitely what Disney is about. So practicing those types of things or knowing what you need to give your child so they can wait in line is gonna be key, whether it's some form of entertainment, cell phone, tablet, whatever it is. I am all good with giving your kid whatever they need to have to keep them happy, right? To make peace for everyone, not just you and the kiddo, but everyone around you and your kiddo, you wanna keep the peace. I had no problem giving my kids a coloring book, a tablet, my cell phone for a few minutes. I mean, whatever is really needed to keep them kind of happy in line. Next thing up is food. Now, I get a lot of clients who have kids who are picky eaters. I hear this all the time. My kid will only eat chicken nuggets. In fact, not only will my kid only eat chicken nuggets, my kid will only eat this one brand of chicken nuggets. And those of you with the picky kid will totally understand this. You wanna practice eating different foods now. Look on the menu, see what type of food they are serving to kiddos right now. Something beyond the pizza, the nuggets, the burgers, right? The mac and cheese. 
And if that's the only thing your kid will eat, then you definitely wanna research where you can find those items on property. But you definitely wanna practice eating different food, get a little brave with their eating here, but you wanna practice different brands. Cause I'll tell you right now, if your kid is only used to eating say McDonald's hamburgers and they go to Disney, they are not gonna taste like McDonald's. If your kid is only used to eating your homemade mac and cheese, they are not gonna be understanding of what the difference is of say craft mac and cheese right does this kind of make sense i know my kiddos are like this even now they love my mashed potatoes when i make mashed potatoes at home they're in heaven when we go to disney and get mashed potatoes they're always like mom these taste weird yeah they taste weird because they were probably made with different potatoes and different seasonings and and you know the chefs do things different not necessarily wrong just different. So anyway, the point of this is to practice eating different foods. If your kids will only eat one type of thing, we'll get them different brands so they can kind of broaden their horizon a little bit with food. This is just gonna be easier on you and them once you get to the parks. Next one up is drinking water. Now I know for some people this sounds really, really stupid. Why does my child need to practice drinking water? But there are many kiddos out there who don't drink water. I hear from so many parents, my kid only drinks milk. My kid only drinks juice. You want to practice water, guys. Absolutely. It is hot in Disney. It is hot in Florida. And you're there all day long for days at a time. Dehydration is so common. Practice drinking water. If your kiddo isn't a water drinker, practice now. Try thinning down that juice with water until it ends up just being water. If your kid is at the park, you know, give them their one glass of milk or their one glass of juice, but tell them the rest of it has to be water. Practice that at home, practice it now, so you're better prepared at Disney. And the same thing goes with that water bottle. Do not just spring up a generic water bottle on your child for the first time at Disney, especially those little ones. Have them practice with the water bottle you, you plan on taking to Disney so they can get used to how to drink out of it and all that great stuff. It's all just so you don't end up with a dehydrated child. So yes, practice drinking water, large quantities, and practice drinking out of whatever water container vessel type situation you plan on having them drink the water out of, whether it's a straw from like a fountain drink or a sippy cup or whatever. Next thing up is loud sounds. Now, this might not be all kids. We definitely dealed with it in our family, right? Disney is loud. It is very high for sensory. If you have any child with any form of sensory anything, and I'm not saying they have to be diagnosed as autism, right? Any form of sensitivity to sensory, this could be important to you. Disney is loud. When those parades come down, they are loud. Sometimes you're accidentally next to a speaker or one of the floats is a speaker and it, yeah, I mean, you'll see kids like covering up their ears. Fireworks are loud. Sometimes when you transition from one area to the park to another area of the park, the music changes. For some kiddos, that could be very sensitive. And on top of the music and the loud rides, right? You've got people constantly talking and next to you and anyway, not all kids are ready for that. And don't be like me and find out too late. We didn't know till we were actually at the theme park when we found out one of my kiddos was sensitive to sound. I had no idea until we got to Disney and I was like, holy, okay, we need to fix this. So prepare now, practice going to places that are loud. Practice having dance parties and play loud music. Get them used to all that action and that noise now. And if you have a kiddo that is sensitive or you're just not sure, you can get noise canceling headphones. And again, practice. You wanna practice wearing them. You wanna practice going out in public with them. Anything you can do to keep your kiddo kind of happy and calm is gonna be key here because for me at Disney, it's not happy wife, happy life. It is happy kiddo. <laughs> happy life because if one of those kiddos goes down yep the whole family's going down with that kiddo so the more happy i can make the kiddo the more happy the rest of us will be and i'm not talking about spoiling them to death with sugar and craziness i'm talking about making them prepared for what disney has to offer once they get to what could be their first uh, vacation right next thing is staying up late. I know I suggest not to keep your kids up late. I suggest that you keep your bedtime that you do at home, similar to at Disney. 
And sometimes that means your kiddos are missing fireworks. But I have many families who don't want to miss fireworks and they try taking midday breaks and then they end up staying up late. Anyway, my point is, depending on all of these things, you want to practice staying up late. For me, my kiddos had a very strict bedtime. And so when we got to Disney and I thought, well, we'll just keep them up an extra hour. It'll be fine. No, it was not. Their bodies were telling them we are done. It's bedtime and they were ready to go whether I wanted to watch fireworks or see a parade or go shopping. It didn't matter what mommy wanted to do. Their bodies said, no, we're done. Because, you know, they have those, you know, internal alarm clocks, right? So you want to practice that. Practice at home. Practice on the weekend staying up late. And not staying up late and watching TV. Staying up late and taking a walk. Staying up late and doing something that would be similar to what you would be doing at Disney. You know, going on rides, walking around the park, all those great things. Again, you just want to practice it. And the final one here is number 10, sharing a room. How many of you is this your first time with your whole family in one hotel room? If this is the first time for you, you want to practice that. I am cannot emphasize this enough. Practice, practice, practice all of these things, especially sharing a room, right? So have a sleepover in your living room. Have a camp out in your living room. Have everyone share the living room together, sleeping bags, sofa time, whatever. What does this do? This helps everyone get used to each other's sounds. Someone might not be used to sleeping in a room with a snorer. Someone might not be used to sleeping um, next to someone who steals all the covers or rolls around like crazy. We're not all used to that. Practice it now. Have a couple of uh, kiddos sleep in the parents' bedroom, right? Have them, you know, get out the sleeping bag, sleep on the floor. It's getting used to those sounds. It's getting used to that sleeping next to someone who's going to be rolling over on top of them or, you know, slapping them in the face. You know what I mean, right? You guys have slept next to other people before. Uh, kid, my one, oh, I don't want to embarrass her, but she is a wild sleeper. I can't tell you how many times I've been slapped in the face at, uh, during a hotel stay. So anyway, my point is, is to practice. You also want to practice certain things like, uh, you know, when you're in a hotel and everyone's in tight quarters, you know, you got two queen beds and four people. Uh, the bathroom's right there. What happens if someone gets up and turns on the light and flushes the toilet? Is that going to wake everyone up? You want to practice those things ahead of time or at least have kind of a family rule of what to do. Are you going to flush or not flush? Are we going to turn on the light or just use the makeup mirror to kind of illuminate as a night light? You want to discuss these things, figure them out. So when you're there, you're kind of prepared. I get that I am a super type A personality and I am overly prepared for absolutely everything on the planet, but this is just how I roll guys. And I know you're probably like Nina is beyond crazy. Let me know in the comments, am I too crazy? You wanna just wing your trip with your kids for the first time? Let me know. I, I definitely did all these things with my kiddos for our first few trips. Now they're pros. We make going to Disney look super easy, but before this, you know, these recent trips, we had some difficult trips. We had some difficult moments. We had people not sleeping. We had people cranky. We had people not wanting to sit in the stroller anymore. People not wanting to walk anymore. People sensitive to sounds. All those things definitely happened to us. I'm just trying to help you guys so you're prepared for them, right? Yeah, hopefully. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful. I get if not all these things work for your family. Some, some parents share their beds with their kids and they're already used to that. And that's great. I'm talking for people more like me whose kids had never ever slept with the parents before. And then we go to the hotel room and it's like, why does dad snore so much, right? Why is it so loud in here? Practice those things now. Practice them in advance so by the time you get to Disney, you don't have to worry about these things, right? You can more or less go with the flow and enjoy yourself. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. Please, please, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray. Hit the bell icon for notifications like this video. And like I said, comment. Did Nina go over the top? Or did I help you out? Were there a few on here that you didn't know about? And you're like, yep, we're gonna do that. We're absolutely gonna do that. Again, I'm just trying to help you guys out. These things were definitely beneficial for my family at different stages of our young 
life, right? Our young family life. Um, yeah, so I'm just sharing that knowledge uh, with you guys. If it doesn't work for you or it's not needed for your family, great. For us and a few of my clients, yeah, these things were definitely needed and worked. They do work. Practicing these things does indeed work. So anyway, guys, as always, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye, guys.